Hey guys, welcome to section 3.7. In this section, we'll talk about systems of linear equations. Let's get started. So a couple of motivating questions to start. Um, here's an example of a problem that we've done before, and it essentially asks us to find a solution to this equation, negative 3x plus 4y equals negative 12. And all this meant to us in the past was that we just needed to find a point on this line because points that are on this line are solutions to this line or to this equation. And we could accomplish this by simply plugging in numbers for x or for y. So I'll take the easy way out and just say if x is equal to zero and this number doesn't have to be zero and this didn't need to be x. You could have picked a number for y. You could have picked 17.34 if you wanted to. It would just make life a little more cumbersome but you would end up getting the same result. So to keep things easy and nice and easy and simple for us, if x turns out to be zero, or if we choose x to be zero, we can find the corresponding y coordinate for the point that's going to be on this line by plugging it in. So negative three times zero plus four times y equals negative 12. Negative three times zero is just zero, so it drops off. And the four y comes down, the negative 12 comes down. How do we get the y by itself? Well, the four and the y are being multiplied, so the inverse operation of multiplication would be division. So dividing the four over to the other side gives us y equals negative 12 over four, which is negative three. So what that means is that the point zero comma negative three is a solution. It also means that zero comma negative three is a point on this graph. So if we were to graph this line, zero comma negative three would be a point on the line. So these are two notions or two concepts that you should understand mean the same thing. So asking someone to find a solution or asking someone to find a point on the line are the same thing. So vice versa, what happens if I give you a point and I say, is this point a solution to this equation? Another way of asking the same question is to say, is this point on the graph of this line. Now one way to do this would just be to graph this line and see if this if it passes through this point. But what happens if this point is so close to the line that you can't tell it apart, but it's not on the line itself. So then you'll have a false positive and say, well, it looks like it's going through the line, but it might not actually do so. So we have to have a an algebraic or a sure shot way of figuring out if this point is on this line or if this point is a solution to this equation. Both those questions mean the same thing. Now in the previous example that we talked about, we found the point by plugging in the x value and seeing whatever the y value was. In this question, we don't need to well, exactly do that because we're given both coordinates. So what we could do is plug five in for x, plug three fifth in for y, and then see if the left-hand side turns out to be negative 12. Because if it does, then that means that this point or these two coordinates are solutions to this equation, or this point is a point on this line. So negative three times five is negative 15, four times three over five, we multiply the four and the three, that gives us the 12, the five just comes down, and the negative 12 comes wrong for the right. We didn't do anything to this. Now here, because I have two, uh, I guess I have to add these two terms, I don't have a fraction with the same denominator. The 15 is just over a one. So what I can do is I can multiply the negative 15 by five over five. And when I do that, I get negative 15 times five over five. The 12 already has a five in the denominator, so I don't have to do anything to it. I can just leave it as it is. And then the negative 12 comes along again. The reason why we're doing this is because when we add uh, fractions or whole numbers and fractions, they have to have the same denominator. We cannot add two fractions or a whole number and a fraction if they do not share the same denominator. So negative 15 times five is negative 75 over five. The 12 over five just comes along. And once we have a common denominator that we've created, what we can do is we can make a single line, and please remember this, 
uh, we will use this again and again later on in the semester. So please remember this idea that once we have common denominators, we can write it as a common denominator. So we can write a single fraction with a five as the denominator. I would put a star next to this. This is an idea or a notion that we will revisit a few times this semester. And in the numerator, we have negative 75 plus 12. That simplifies to negative 63 over 5. Now, negative 63 over 5 is not negative 12. So this is a false statement. And what that means is that this point, when we plugged in 5 and 3 fifths, if we had gotten negative 12 equals negative 12, we would have said that, yeah, this is a solution to this line, or that that point is on the graph of this line. But since we got a false statement when we plugged it in, that means that this is not a solution. Also, this point is not on the graph of the line. Now all these questions are going to come in together. Right now they just seem kind of haphazardly put together, but let's say we we're being asked to find the solution, find a solution to x minus y equals 3. So again, remember this is a linear function in two variables, so it's going to have an infinite number of solutions. All the points that are on the line, whatever the line looks like, will be solutions. So here again, if I want to find a solution, I can just pick a random value for x. So in this case, I chose x equals 5. And if I take 5 and I plug it into this equation, I get 5 minus y equals 3. The 5 currently is being added. There's a plus sign in front of the 5. So if I were to pick this up and move it over to the other side, the inverse operation would become a subtraction. So the negative y comes down, the 3 comes down, 5 becomes a negative 5 on the other side leaving us with negative y equals 3 minus 5, which is negative 2. Now at this stage, in order to get y by itself, I have a couple of different things that I can do. So I can multiply both sides by a negative 1, or I can divide both sides by a negative 1. And in both cases, you'd get y equals 2. So what that gives us is that at x equals 5 and at y equals 2, or at 5 comma 2, we have a solution. Or we can say that 5 comma 2 is on this line. Not only is it a solution to this equation, but it's also on the graph of that particular line. So here's the question that we want to answer. So these were three examples that I gave to motivate the following question. How would one find if there's a point that is on both lines? So the first example that we found was this one. So I found a point that is on this line, 0 comma negative 3. And then we found a point on this line, 5 comma 2. Now these are just individual points. But is there a point, and could we find it if there is one, that is on both lines? Not just one of them, but on both lines. So the way we would address this problem or this question is by setting up a system of linear equations. So there's a couple of different ways to write this. You can either write the two equations one on top of the other and put squarely brackets or curly brackets rather in front of them. Or you can just write top and bottom, one equation on top, one equation on the bottom. And when things are written in this fashion, we assume or when we look at them, we say that, hey, this is a system of linear equations. So from elementary school, you probably remember plural words. So when you have a collection of geese, we call that a gaggle of geese. If you have a bunch of lions together, we call them a pride of lions. A bunch of puppies together is called a litter of puppies. It's the same idea. In mathematics, when we have more than one linear equation, we call that a system of linear equations. So this is a system of linear equations. So when we solve a system of linear equations or solve a system of equations, what that gives us is that it gives us the location of the point that's on both lines. What it also gives us is a solution to both equations because a point is a solution. But it's not just a solution to one of the equations, it's a solution to both equations. Now if it's a solution to both equations, it has to be on the graph of both equations. And the only way those two things can happen simultaneously is if that point is actually simultaneously on both equations, 
which is to say that it's the point of intersection. So if two lines meet each other, that'll be the point of intersection. Wherever they meet, that is the solution to the system of equations. So when we find a solution to a system of equations, we're actually trying to find where two functions intersect. Please, please, please remember these three equivalent statements. This is going to be very, very important for us. So there's three common ways to do this. One is graphing. Now I wrote this in a different color because it only gives us an estimate of a solution. Unless you're using a computer to graph, and even then, you're not likely to get an exact solution unless two lines cross on like a known point. And I'll explain this in a bit. Another way of solving a system of equations is by substitution, which we'll talk about in this, in this uh, video. And then elimination and addition we'll get to later on in the semester as and when time permits. But for now, uh, we want you to get very comfortable with graphing and with substitution as the two techniques to use to solve these questions. So graphing, well, this should be semi-reasonable. You graph both lines and you see where they cross. And wherever they intersect, if they intersect, that point is the solution or that point is the point of intersection, or that point is um, on the graph of both lines. So in order to graph a line, we need two points. And from the very first slide, we already have one of the points, 0, negative 3. So that we did at the very beginning of this talk, right here. So we know that 0, negative 3 is on this line, so in order to graph this line, I just need another point. So I can do that by plugging in, say, a 0 for y. I plugged in a 0 for x, I can plug in a 0 for y. And if I do that, 4 times 0 just goes away, because it's 0, leaving behind negative 3x equals negative 12. And then the operation between negative 3 and x is multiplication. So in order to get rid of this negative 3, I would need to divide it over to the other side negative 12 over negative 3 would equal 4. So what that gives us is that if I plug in 0 for y, if my y coordinate is 0, I get x as 4. So this point is also on the line. Now, for this line, we had also plugged in 5 for x in one of the previous slides and gotten y equals 2. So we already have one point, we just need to find another one. And again, I did something similar here. I plugged in 0 for y, just because we have the ability and the freedom to do that. If we plug in 0 for y, this just goes away, leaving behind x equals 3. So what that gives us is that there's another point on this line at 3, 0. Now if we were to graph these, at 3, 0, it's that point, and the other point that we had on this line was at 5 comma 2. So if I were to connect these two dots, the blue dots, I would get the graph of the blue line, y, x minus y equals 3. So we have that line. And for the white one, which was the first graph that we started with, the two points we had were 0, negative 3, which is that dot, and then 4, 0, which is that dot. So if we were to connect these two dots, we would get the equation of this line. Now we can see from this picture that these two dots or these two lines intersect somewhere there and the point of intersection is negative 0.7 roughly kind of there comma negative 3.5 somewhere here. So what we can do is we can estimate that the solution to the system is close to negative 0.7 and negative 3.5. Again because we're drawing these things by hand we're only going to be able to get into a ballpark. We're not going to be able to get to an exact answer. We can estimate that this is the solution, but these lines are not perfectly straight. The graph is not perfectly sectioned off by equal numbers. So graphing is okay if we just wanna be in, the, in a rough estimate area, but if we need exact answers, we need to try something algebraic. So substitution, has a couple of steps and this really seems a lot more complicated than it is. But the first step for substitution is to solve any one equation for a variable and you can choose the variable to your choice. So 
given that we have a system, we have two linear equations. So you can pick any one of them and solve that one equation for a variable, whichever one you want. The next thing you do is you replace that variable in the other equation, not the one you solved for, but in the other equation with the expression that you solved. And this sounds more complicated. When we get to the next slide, this will make a little more sense. And once you have the value of one of the variables, you can substitute it into either equation in the system to find the value of the other variable. So let's apply this to a problem and then see how we would come back to how exactly we're using these steps. So let's solve the system. Let's see what the actual solution is to this equation. And if we got close with our estimation using the graph. So our first equation, I'm going to circle it. My first equation is negative 3x plus 4y equals negative 12. The second equation is x minus y equals 3. So here, you want to try to be smart with your time and you want to be smart with what choice of variable you pick to isolate. Now, if I wanted to solve this equation for either x or y, I could do it, but it's just going to cause me to create fractions. Not only that, there's coefficients and there's a whole bunch more going on here. Whereas in this equation, if I wanted to get x by itself, it's already positive. That means in order to isolate x, I would just need to get rid of this negative y. So hopefully you guys recognize that solving the second equation for x is actually the least amount of work. Could we solve this equation for y? Absolutely, you can solve any equation for any variable. But here's where mathematics becomes a little bit of an art. You want to do things in the most efficient way possible. Can it be done by solving this equation for y? Absolutely. But why do that when there's a much easier, much simpler choice available? So we can solve this equation for x by adding this negative y over to the other side, giving us x equals 3 plus y. So this is the first step. Solve one of the equations for a particular variable. And we did that. Now what we can do is we can replace the x in the first equation with this expression that we just found because x is equal to 3 plus y, this x can also be replaced with 3 plus y. So doing that, we get negative 3x plus 4y equals negative 12. This x that was here originally got replaced with 3 plus y. Now, hopefully you recognize that this is just a linear equation in one variable. Linear because the power of all the variables is one, and there's only one variable. So this is basically a blast from the past from chapter one and chapter two. So the typical tools apply. Negative three times three is negative nine. We're just distributing here. Negative three times y is negative three y. The four y comes down, the negative 12 comes down. Now here we can combine like terms. So we have a negative three y and a positive four y. Adding those two gives us just a single y. The negative 9 comes down, the negative 12 comes down. Now we're trying to solve for y because that's the only variable we have. So this negative 9, if I were to pick it up and move it over to the other side, because it's being subtracted here because the minus sign, if I were to lift it and move it over to the other side, the inverse operation would be an addition. So we have y equals negative 12 plus 9. Combining these two like terms, we get y equals negative 3. So what we've accomplished so far if we've, is we've isolated one variable in one equation. We have replaced the expression that we found, 3 plus y, 4x in the first equation. And when we solve that equation, we have found the value of one of the variables. The last step is we can take this value and plug it into either of these two equations. It doesn't matter which one you do it because the point is on both lines. We're looking for a point of intersection. The point of intersection is the only point that exists on both of these lines. So it doesn't really matter if I want to find the x coordinate from here or from here because it has to be the same number. So, oh, here, I wrote it again. So this gives us the y coordinate of the point of intersection. To find the x coordinate, we can plug it into either equation. So I plugged y into my first equation, you could have plugged y into the second equation as well. 
and you'll see that we get the same answer at the end. So negative 3x plus 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, and the negative 12 comes down. Now this negative 12, or this 12 is being subtracted because of the minus sign. So if I were to lift this up and move it over to the other side, the inverse operation would be addition by 12. So the negative 3x just comes down, negative 12 plus 12 just gives me 0. You'll notice here the negative 3 is being multiplied by x, so the inverse operation of multiplication is division. So if I were to lift this negative 3 up and move it over to the other side, that turns it into a division. 0 divided by a non-zero number is equal to 0. Hopefully you remember that from the slope uh, discussion. And just to prove that we get the same x coordinate for the point of intersection, we could plug x minus y, we could plug negative 3 into x minus y equals 3. So we have x minus a negative 3 equals 3. A negative and a negative turns it into a positive. x plus 3 equals 3. The 3 is being added on the left-hand side because of the plus sign. So if I were to lift this 3 up and move it over to the other side, it would turn into a subtraction, the inverse operation. And 3 minus 3 is 0. So what that gives us is that the point of intersection of those two lines of the system, uh, of these two lines, is actually 0, comma negative 3. So graphing gave us a pretty reasonable answer, but it was not exact. So going back to the graph, the actual point of intersection should have been right here. Now, if I had drawn these with a ruler and everything were nice and straight, we might have actually intersected at 0, negative 3. But we got pretty darn close to it. Now, that doesn't mean that this is a solution. That's why we can't really trust graphing uh, when it comes to solving systems of equations, especially for graphing by hand. So here, we get that 0, comma, negative 3 is a point of intersection. Now this is just a potential solution. We don't know if it's a solution or not. So here's where I'm going to go back and ask about, or that's why in fact I asked this question. Is this point a solution to this line? The way we checked that was we plugged the x and the y coordinates in and we got a false statement at the end. So now the question is, is 0 comma negative 3 a solution to this line? Well, to accomplish that, all we have to do is simply plug it in right here. So if I plug it into the first equation, I get negative 3 times 0 plus 4 times negative 3 equals negative 12. Negative 3 times 0 is simply 0. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, and the negative 12 comes down. 0 minus 12 is simply negative 12, so we get a true statement here. Now what that means is that 0 comma negative 3 is a point that's on this line. That's something we've confirmed. And if we do the same thing with the second line, we also get a true statement at the end. And that means that 0 comma negative 3 is a point on this line as well. Now the only way that can happen is if it's a point of intersection, if it's a point that's on both lines. So. Let's do a word problem, something similar where you actually have to create your own system. So the word problem says, find two numbers that add to give you 40 with a difference of 11. So again, it's a word problem. So hopefully you guys remember that defining variables is probably the easiest thing to do to make sure that you get the question right. So we can say that we can let one of the numbers be x. And since we don't know what the other number is, we can call that one y. So we know that the sum of the two numbers, or that they add to 40, that means x plus y must be 40. And that's one of my equations, or that's my first equation. Now we also know that their difference is 11. So we can write x minus y equals 11. That's my second equation. So we have created a system of linear equations, and we can solve this either by graphing, but remember, graphing is going to give us uh, an estimate of an answer, but if we want it to be certain, we can use substitution. So again, I'm going to use the second equation and solve for x just for the sake of doing it. I, in this case, 
I had three good choices actually. I could have solved for this x pretty quickly, just subtract the y over. I could have solved for this y fairly easily, I could have subtracted this x over. And I can solve for this x fairly easily, I can add the y over. So this is just coincidence that I'm solving the second equation for x again, like I did in the previous problem. But it, it really just depends on the question. So here I had three good choices that I could have used. Uh, I encourage you to solve this problem maybe by isolating for this y. Pause the video, isolate for this y, and see if you get the same answer. You should, if you do the problem correctly. So here, solving the second equation for x, we would need to get this y over to the other side. And because it's a subtraction on the left hand side, if I were to do the inverse operation, when I move it over, it would become a positive y. Now replace this y in the first equation, or I'm sorry, replace this x in the first equation with this expression we just found. So if you start with x plus y equals 40, this x gets replaced with 11 plus y. And now we have a nice linear equation in one variable, again, linear because the greatest exponent is one, and there's only one variable. So these are like terms, so we can combine them y plus y gives us two y, the 11 just comes down, the 40 just comes down. Now in order to get the y by itself, I need to get rid of this 11 first. So because the 11 is being added on the left hand side, in order to move it over to the right hand side, I would need to subtract it just the inverse operation. 40 minus 11 is 29. And the two y just comes down. Now the operation between two and y is a multiplication. So in order to get rid of this two, I would need to divide it over to the other side. So 29 over two would be one of the numbers. So remember, one of the numbers was x and the other number was y. So since we found the value of y, in order to find the value of x, the third step would be to go to either of these two equations and plug this value of y into, it doesn't matter which one you plug it into, because it's a point of intersection. Both lines have to have the same point. So what I did here is I substituted the value of y into the first equation. Again, it doesn't matter which one you plug it into. So if we start with x plus y equals 40, x plus 29 over 2 gives us 40 as well. Now this is a linear equation in one variable, so our same tricks and tools apply. In order to get rid of this fraction, what I can do is I can multiply all terms by 2. And again, some of you might say, well, can I just subtract the 29 over 2 onto the other side and simplify this using fractions? Absolutely, all power to you. Most of the students don't feel comfortable doing that, so I'm going to continue doing this. So in order to solve for x, the easiest thing to do would be to clear the fractions first. So we can multiply every single term of this equa equation by 2, giving us 2x plus 2 times 29 over 2 equals 2 times 40. These 2s will cancel with each other. So the 2x would just come down, the 29 would come down, 2 times 40 is 80. Now here you'll notice that 29 is being added. So the inverse operation of addition is subtraction, so the 29 moves over to the other side. 80 minus 29 is 51, and the 2x is just coming along for the ride. Finally, we see that the operation between 2 and x is multiplication. So in order to get rid of this 2, I would need to divide it over to the other side. So 51 over 2 is my first number, or is the other number. So what we found is that the two numbers are 29 over 2 and 51 over 2. Now, what I did not do here, and I'm leaving it up to you guys so you get some practice with fractions as well, is you can plug these numbers in to this system to confirm that it's a solution to this equation and it's a solution to this equation as well. And if it's a solution to both equations, then we can say that it's a solution to the system of the whole thing and that it's a point of intersection, and that that point lies on both lines. So that's what we can do to confirm that this, or these two numbers are solutions to the system we have. And that's it. If you guys have any questions, as always, please feel free to reach out. Have a nice evening.